Would you like to take a stroll in a forest on an autumn day just like that? Well, not only will I take you for a stroll in a forest on an autumn day just like that, I'll show you how to paint it. Hi, I'm Tom Lynch, and I'm glad you're with me on this image of forests because I can show you how the painting will actually paint itself. That's right, you just gotta get it started and it will take over. That's the beauty of watercolor and why I like watercolor so much. I wanna get started right away and talk to you about a couple technical things after I get a good rich wash going down. So take a look in the palette and let's get a start on the colors that we're going to use. I'm gonna play with some permanent yellow lemon, I'm gonna play with some permanent yellow orange, and gonna play with some permanent red, so those are those rich, fiery fall colors. A little accent of a magenta and a cobalt blue. And as always, I really recommend that you have these colors laying out, already wet, juiced up in your palette, ready to go. Clean out your brush frequently between those particular changes. Here's a little burnt sienna. And then you can see the colors start to run and flow with each other and go, whoa, I think I'll play with a touch of red in that permanent yellow-orange. Come on over to the painting and let's just lay some color down. So what I'm looking for at this stage is to not identify individual trees. And that's one of the key components to painting, you know, an autumn forest. Excuse me, reach across to you there. Painting an autumn forest is to start out with a silhouette as though it's just one group or one tree with a lot of different colors. Don't break it down into individual ones just yet. Play with different brush strokes. Notice I'm scraping with the brush stroke. I'll do some tapping with the brush stroke. I'll reach over and grab my spray bottle with some orange in it and I'll do some spots of orange with my sp spray bottle. I'll take some water and do some spots of water at the edge. I'll tell you a couple technical things, but I want to lay down some, some more color first. I think I'll start changing into some reds right about over here. And so I've got a nice rich red. I lay the red down, then I bring it over and overlap what was already there. I clean out my brush, and how about a little burnt sienna change over here? Just a touch of it, a little color change. Cleaning out my brush, now I think it's time for a nice magenta and a cobalt blue in this area. But notice I put that color down first, then I overlap. A lot of times they tend to start overlapping and then carry the color out. Not so. I like to start out with the color down, the nice rich red as you see there, and then overlap it. Now, as I come down towards the bottom of the page, and again, this is just one silhouette to start with. I start playing with some positive and negative. I'm painting around a tree trunk here or there. And then I'll paint a darker tree trunk coming forward. So I'm uh, starting to show you one of the tricks and the most important elements to doing a forest, and that is it's not on a straight line. If you can, in your design or composition, have the forest have a more interesting uh, part at the bottom where we're at now and a more interesting part at the top. Do some negative painting. That means I painted around a tree trunk and some positive painting. Here comes a tree trunk. There's a tree trunk there. Move on, and it's all done with this large flat brush. Turn it to its side. Turn it on its edge. Turn it straight up and have a couple branches this way. Start out the painting loose, stylized if you have to call it that. Simple, a suggestion. Capture the essence of what is taking place. Don't worry about the exact identity. Here's a chance I'll do something up here for you. We'll play with a different type of tree. Look at how I tap the brush and I end up with, might be a lone pine tree stuck in there amongst all the other forest trees. A touch of the summer color is always an interesting look. Usually at the bottom is the best place to have a touch of the summer color. Even a green tree trunk. Not every tree trunk has to be brown and isolated. Hold the brush on its side and use the corner of the brush to do some smaller uh, brush strokes and brush marks. I can grab a round brush. There's nothing wrong with changing once in a while. And where you see these open places, that's where I will play with some branches. Not this. I'll show you what not to do. Don't worry about dragging the brush wet and turret wet across the tree trunk. I want to even get rid of it. I want to smudge it away. Where those dry spots are is where I want to play with the idea of a forest. Now while you're there, I want to back you up and look at the whole scene just a, just a second and talk about a couple of other elements while this is starting to dry. The beauty of the forest is to have a, an interesting shape at the top, an up and down and in and out and thick and thin, and then towards the top or the end of the tree, a couple of windows where you're seeing through the tree. Not so much in the middle like I've got here, so I'll cover that one up and just smooth out whatever I painted it color with there. 
Then at the bottom, if you can have an interesting contour, uh, then it's more interesting to look at the painting instead of straight across at the bottom. And bring some of those tree trunks out further. Don't have them all pushed uh, along the horizon line. Bring some tree trunks in and out and play with the idea of positive and negative. So I have a tree trunk. You see it because it's light in front of dark. Now you see a tree trunk because it's dark in front of light. So play with that and then watch out for the different colors. So there's a gray tree trunk. We said over here there's a green tree trunk. Now here's, a, here's a, something to watch out for. See all the tree trunks on the, on the same line? So I'll set that down and I'll drag one of those tree trunks lower and make it whiter. So the beauty of the forest partly is in the design, the layout. So you have an interesting look at the bottom, an interesting look at the top. And then the fun happens. Now you can have some fun and start playing with the painting. Now you can take and actually, I'm going to take the brush. I'm going to just, you can stay right there because I'm going to be throwing some paint. So I'm going to load up the brush. I'm almost going to scoop out some paint. And now when the shine goes away, that's a key ingredient. You, that's why I wanted to start this right away so I could have the shine start drying. Don't dry it because that might take it too dry and too fast. When the shine goes away in that part, I want you to take and actually throw some paint. So I'm actually throwing some paint. Use the same color, slightly lighter or slightly darker, but don't put a red on a green. So the same color over the same color. Yellow, if, is any, if anything, is one color that you could use almost anywhere in a summer or a fall or even a springtime forest. And so now I'm, gonna, I'm starting co collecting these clumps of paint. And I'm going to show you right here, even though this is all practice. Remember, we're just playing. We're just going to get warmed up for the day. Here's what the clump would look like if the paper was dry. So you can see that's that splatter there. That's the kind of splatter that I'm looking at. So take splatters like this and bring it up and have it happen there. You can see one of them over here, that splatter. If it runs a little bit, that's fine. If it moves over to the side. So tapping gives you tiny little spots. Look at the you're not looking for tiny little spots like this. We're looking for clumps and clusters. So once in a while, you may have to stand up to do this. On occasion, your spray bottle, you know, with just water could be a, a subtle way. But I recommend throwing paint first instead of doing it with the spray bottle. Then what's going to happen, those watermarks are going to start to push paint aside. That heaviness of the water and the throwing that we hit, it'll push paint to the side. And you're going to end up with something like this. So this is this one that's already dry. You can get an idea of what has happened. And I'll share with you a little extra change that I made. But here you can see where I've got a bunch of snarly weather texture. Look at all the different clusters. That's why I wasn't worried about individual trees. There's now the beginning of individual trees, and all we need is an accent or two of a branch. So let's put an accent or two of a branch. So I'll set this aside. And so that's why, actually, it paints itself. You don't have to decide where the tree trunk is. So we'll lay that down. I'll take my rigger brush, bring it over to the palette, pick up a couple of dark colors, and don't just use burnt sienna. That's like the last color I want to use. Just come over here and play with a uh, little ultramarine blue or a cobalt blue, a touch of magenta. And then over to the painting and watch this now. I'm going to take this branch and tree trunk and bring it up to that watermark in the blossom. And then it disappears and then it comes back again and then it disappears over here and then comes back again. Now, as we've taught you on the lesson on tree trunks and branches, now I'm worrying about a variety. There's eight or ten, there's ten or twelve, and there's one or two. So I'm looking for where, here's another watermark here, look at this one. The tree branch comes up, there's that watermark and that blossom. Now the branch disappears behind it, now it comes out in front, now it comes back out again. So I'm playing with these clusters, these clumps, for where to show. So it's like this is a light grouping of leaves, and here's a light cluster of leaves out in front. And then have some fun with branches where it's different quantities and don't do the same thickness. So now I want to use a really thick, heavy old tree trunk coming across this way and a little angle that way. But I'm using, again, I'm using the watermark as an area to where the individual trees are. That's why I wanted to start out with. And the last thing, kind of a fun thing, across the ground, because you have the beautiful contours of this countryside. You want to play with your shadows to have a nice contour as well. Exaggerate the contour and it gives, takes the viewer on a roller coaster ride. Think of it. Areas where I've left it light in the background, I can just take a light wash, clean out my brush and I'll get a light blue. So stay right there. I'll put a, just a feeling of shadow there in the background. If you have a nice soft hair brush and then just that contour of the shadow coming across, 
Look at those shadows taking the view. We're on a roller coaster ride. So the part of the interest in this painting isn't just trees, is the idea of the variety of the slope to the hillside, the playing of the different areas of uh, texture. Well, you got to check that behind the mat because I think for we're just supposed to play and have just a little bit of fun, you know, with a uh, snippet on uh, uh, how to do uh, forest. And I think that has caught the idea. And as now, you, don't you feel energized and ready and off to a start? Let's start a whole new painting. That's the beauty of these snippets. Play, have some fun, and watch me for a live broadcast when I can do a whole lot more with this forest and have fun with you. Thanks for watching Art Academy Live. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. burnt sienna and then you can see the colors start to run and flow with each other and go whoa I think I'll play with a touch of red in that permanent yellow orange come on over to the painting and let's just lay some color down so what I'm looking for at this stage is to not identify individual trees and that's one of the key components to painting you know an autumn forest excuse me reach across to you there painting an autumn forest is to start out with a silhouette as though it's just one group or one tree with a lot of different colors. Don't break it down into individual ones just yet. Play with different brush strokes. Notice I'm scraping with the brush stroke. I'll do some tapping with the brush stroke. I'll reach over and grab my spray bottle with some orange in it and I'll do some spots of orange with my sp spray bottle. I'll I'm going to play with some permanent yellow lemon. I'm going to play with some permanent yellow orange and I'm going to play with some permanent red. So those are those rich fiery fall colors. A little accent of a magenta and a cobalt blue. And as always, I really recommend that you have these colors laying out already wet, juiced up in your palette, ready to go. Clean out your brush frequently between those particular changes. Here's a little. Would you like to take a stroll? in a forest on an autumn day just like that? Well, not only will I take you for a stroll in a forest on an autumn day just like that, I'll show you how to paint it. Hi, I'm Tom Lynch, and I'm glad you're with me on this image of forests because I can show you how the painting will actually paint itself. That's right, you just gotta get it started and it will take over. That's the beauty of watercolor and why I like watercolor so much. I wanna get started right away and talk to you about a couple technical things after I get a good rich wash going down. So take a look in the palette and let's get a start on the colors that we're going to use.